Hi, welcome to the Wildflower Tutorial Part 2, where we're going to be covering tile editing. The Wildflower world is divided up into 24 by 24 screens. Each one of these squares is a screen for the Siptio cubes. You can start editing wherever you want, but in this tutorial we're going to start right above where you normally would in the example level. In this screen here, we'll just move the player there by pressing M. In the upper right hand corner of the screen are three buttons that allow you to change which layer you're editing. You can also just press that button on your keyboard. Right now, we're going to be working with layers 1 and 2. You can press 1 to select the background layer, and when you do, the quick pick box in the lower right hand corner of the screen will show you the background tile sheet. The background tile sheet is divided up into three different sections. The top half is for solid tiles, then there are four rows of non-solid tiles, and then the bottom four rows are reserved for more specialized functions, like ladders and animated tiles. The cloud tiles are also grouped in with the solid tiles because there's a power-up that allows you to jump on top of clouds. For right now, let's just pick a solid tile. You can begin drawing with the left mouse button anywhere you want. The player can jump three blocks high, so we'll make a little jump for him, and another one. You can press Z to flood fill wherever the mouse is. Let's also make some water for him to jump over. I'm going to use the quick pick box again to select some water and draw a little bit of it in. When you're ready to test your changes, just click on the Siftulator test button. This will compile and run your game in the Siftulator. Okay, and it drops us right in the level that we had just created just seconds ago. Another way you can change which tile type you're going to draw with is to hold control and the left mouse button and mouse over any tile on the screen. It will automatically change to that tile type. Let's create a cave area for the player to explore with some of the tools that we've learned. I want to use the flood fill here to quickly fill out a cave area. And there is one more way you can move around in the quick pick box by using the W, A, S, and D keys. Once you're familiar with where things are located, you can use this to more quickly draw detail on the terrain. One of the things I like to do is to outline the terrain in black to make it easier for the player to see where the solid areas are that they collide with. To do this, I'm using the W, A, S, and D keys to move around in the quick pick box, knowing that the tiles are arranged in a square fashion, makes it a lot easier to work with. And in just seconds, I've added all the detail. Usually I would not add that much detail until I've already have the gameplay down, but since this is an example, I will. Let's switch to the foreground layer by pressing 2, or clicking on the 2 button. The foreground layer is divided up into two sections. The top half are all non-solid tiles that you can use for decorations. The bottom few rows are reserved for specialized tiles. And there are a lot more specialized tiles on the foreground layer than there are in the background layer. This is where you will have your coins, bounce pads, things that kill the player, conveyor belts, air currents, and whatnot. Let's create a little bit of a world to start playing around with. Some coins, some bounce pads, maybe some stuff to jump over. It's up to you. Maybe some fire here. Sure, why not? You can also use some decoration. Okay. Let's add, let's add some more of these specialized tiles. Try them out. This kind. I think that I don't want that fire there because it's going to kill me. I'll try to jump over that. And one thing you're always going to remember to do is put down a save point in case you die. I'm also going to move the player to a new area and start running the simulator in the same keystroke by just pressing the spacebar 
and it will move the player wherever the mouse is, automatically load up the game right away. Okay, there's our changes. Wildflower will keep track of all the coins the player picks up. So you can use that to have a player remember which areas they've been to and a reward the player for getting secret areas. Another thing that you can do with the foreground tiles is to make the water look a little bit nicer. I have it set up so that the water is actually set up in two sections with the background part and a foreground part. Let's give me the waterproof power up so I can jump in there and see what it looks like. Cool. So now the water has animated and it has uh, two different layers, a background layer that's blue and a foreground layer with this animation. You might notice that on the map we're not seeing our changes, the mini-map. I'm going to show you how to update that right now. It takes a few seconds to update the mini-map. You can do that by clicking the Save Mini-Map button right here. And when you do, it will automatically generate those files. It takes a few more seconds to rebuild the game and incorporate those new mini-map files. So I recommend generating the mini-map only once in a while after you've finalized your level terrain. Now in the mini-map shows all of our changes. Another really useful tool is the rectangle selection tool on the right mouse button. You can just right mouse and drag and then click and drag to move things to a new location. You can also right mouse and then use Control c to copy and Control v to paste. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video is how to put your own art in Wildflower. To do that, you can just navigate to the Wildflower SDK folder and then go to Source, Data, Images. There are also other folders for music and sounds, but for right now let's go to Images and open up the background tile sheet, which is background zero. When I'm editing Siftio tiles, what I'd like to do is turn on the 8x8 grid, which I already have it configured for. Let's draw a smiley face to test our changes in the game. Yeah, nice. Close enough. I'm going to export this on top of itself, and when I switch back to Wildflower, our change is automatically in the game. Let's play some of these tiles and see it running in the simulator. I think I placed myself right above a spike that time, but it doesn't matter. And every time you change an image, it's going to have to recompile a little bit more of the game. So it might take another 10, 20 seconds. Oh, I can get out of the way. Okay, that's our change. It's very easy to add new art in Wildflower. There are also other tile sets you can use if you'd like. It comes with one tile set, but the background actually has six tile sets you can use with these up and down buttons. The way it works is each screen in Wildflower can have its own tile set. So whenever you draw with a different tile set on a specific screen, like this one for example, it will change all the tiles on that screen to use that tile set. If I want to change back to the original tile set, I can just draw again on that screen and everything will get changed back. And that wraps it up for the Wildfire tutorial on tile editing. Next time, we're going to be talking about object editing. Thanks for watching.